Hi there, my name is Vince from Mr Telephone and today I'm going to talk about cable, specifically CCA cable. CCA cable stands for copper clad aluminium and years ago it was never used, it was always pure copper but as copper price has gone up a lot of companies now are selling CCA, some are aware of it and some are not aware of it. CCA is not good cable, it's a lot cheaper, it's mostly aluminium. Worse than that, a lot of copper companies now are selling uh, cables that are just pure aluminium, so they haven't got any copper in. And aluminium has a lot more resistance than copper. So when you're shoving broadband down a line and you're using aluminium cable instead of copper cable, you will get more loss on the line. Also, it's not as advertised. If you're buying a Cat 5E or a Cat 6 cable, it needs to be pure copper. If it's aluminium, it's not a Cat 5E or a Cat 6 cable. Now, years ago, I used to sell a, a lot of patch cables, a lot of Ethernet cables, Cat 5E and Cat 6 on eBay. But over the past few years, it's really dropped off. And I was wondering why this is. So I went out and I bought this cable here. It's perfectly okay. It says on it, Cat 5E. You can see there. It says Cat 5E. It's advertised as Cat 5E. Yeah. I can buy this on eBay for the same price, so I can buy this, that's including VAT, it's including the company paying all their taxes and including delivery for less than I buy my cables wholesale. And I'm wondering how is that possible? I'm not getting a bad deal, I get through a lot of cable, so I'm on good rates. Yet, the cable that I buy is more expensive than getting this cable delivered including the eBay, PayPal, VAT and the company paying tax. So I wanted to know why is it the case. I've opened up one of these cables, it's advertised as Cat 5E, and it's not Cat 5E. I'm going to show you the difference between it. Thousands and thousands of these are sold every single day in the UK. I presume it's the same in the US and other countries as well. They do work. You plug them in and they do work. So people think it's absolutely fine. But that's because Cat 5E is rated up to 100 meg. And you might only have 2 or 3 meg. You might be lucky, you might have 40 or 50 meg. But the thing is, you're not going to have 1000 meg but you should get what you pay for. Because in the future, if you've gone to the bother of installing this in your house and you've run it under the floorboards, then in the future, in the future as, price, uh, as it, the speed increases, you will find that your cable's not up for the job. So what is that if you're doing power over ethernet? I won't talk about this in this particular video, but power over ethernet involves maybe powering your CCTV cameras or other equipment through the ethernet cable. It's designed for copper. It's not designed for aluminium. As a result, it can overheat and it can cause a problem. So if you're using power over ethernet, you don't want to be using CCA cables. Now I'm just going to show you the difference between what a cable should be like and what a cable shouldn't be like. And I've also got a couple of ADSL cables as well that I haven't yet opened. So I'm going to open these live on this video. I haven't opened this before. They're not cheap cables. They look very nice. And I just want to know, is it copper or is it CCA? Is it proper twisted pair or is it something else? Because a lot of companies now, they make the cables look really, really nice to sell, but the inside of the cables are no good at all. So, first of all, I'm just going to show you one of my patch cables that I sell, and I've been selling these for years. I've already got the ends cut off. I'm just going to uh, strip back a bit of the cable and show you. Now, this is Cat5e cable, or so it says. Right. Cat 5E cable, can you see that on the... You got that? And it also says 26AWG. Now, the smaller the AWG, the actual bigger the wire is. So this is 26AWG. Right, so we're going to strip this one back. Okay, let's just use the blue pair, doesn't matter what pair we use. Okay. Now, if we look there, it looks like pure copper. It's got seven, seven strands, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven strands, and if we just put it under a flame test for a couple of seconds, we'll see that it's a, uh, yeah, that it glows. Yeah, but it's not dripping, it's not dripping away, okay? So, that's solid copper. Now, let's have a look at this cable here, which is supposed to be Cat 5E. I'm not going to give names of who sells these cables, the price should give it away. If you're seeing a 20 metre cable for under £5, bearing in mind that it costs over two quid to post a thing, 
then uh, you've got to think about your PayPal fees and your eBay fees and everything else. You then know what they're actually paying for the cable. So okay, it looks perfectly fine. It is labelled up as Cat5e. Okay, and as well as that, another giveaway, this is labelled up as 24AWG. So that's saying that this cable is actually much thicker than my white cable here, because this is 26AWG. So this is saying 24AWG. So we should be expecting a thicker cable, similar to a Cat6 size. Now let's see, I mean, it feels pretty flimsy. Let's see what we've got inside. So we're gonna cut the end off. Strip some back. Now, straight away, look at the difference. Let me cut back some more of this just to show you the twist difference between the proper patch cable and the fake patch cable. Now, you see those, those wires are all twisted around each other. Look at the difference. These are not even bare, these are barely twisted, if anything, and also the colour code's not right. It should be blue and white blue on that one. That's like blue and uh, lighty colour blue and it's barely twisted at all. Let's strip back more just to see what the twists are like. Look, so it's very slightly twisted around each other, probably about the same amount as telephone cable, but that is not data cable. Let's just see what it's actually made up of. So again, we take the blue one. Oh, there you go. It's not even copper, is it? It's not even copper clad aluminium. There's no copper in that at all. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strands of just aluminium. There's no copper there. And if we do the flame test, you see, look, there you go, gone. Yeah? So that shows you that that is aluminium and not copper. Let's take a brown one. See, gone, straight away. Well, if you take the proper one, take the brown one here, next to each other we'll do the burn test on both of them at the same time and we'll see the difference right so we've got two cables here one aluminium one copper can you see the difference can you see that the aluminium is going straight away yeah okay so that's it so you get what you pay for that's the reason People like me, we're not ripping you off on eBay, it's everybody else ripping you off. If you think it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. You need to pay more for your, for your patch cables. That is not Cat5e. You might as well be running a bit of telephone cable. In fact, it's worse than telephone cable, it's just aluminium. That's not rated to absolutely anything. If you start running any power over ethernet down that, you will be in trouble. You will find these cables all over the world because they're mass produced in China. Thousands upon thousands, millions of these will be made. Okay, and they will all be sold cheaply, but you're not getting what you pay for. They shouldn't be made. They're not Cat 5e, they're not Cat 6, they're not Cat anything. They don't pass any standards. They're just printed on there so that they can be made cheaply and then sold cheaply. And thousands of these are sold every day in the UK and they're complete and utter rubbish. And it's not just Ethernet cables. The same will happen with phone cables as well. This is another phone cable. I make phone cables and I make them using copper cable. So this is my cable here. Okay, so this is the flat, uh, you know, this is just flat, flat telephone cable. Same as if you were using it from your, uh, well, like a, like a flat ADSL lead or if you were using it for your, uh, your phone lead. But again, if you strip it back, I won't do, bother doing a burn, burn test on this one, but if you strip it back, tools in front of me for this, uh, you know, again, you will see that it's copper, yeah? You'll see that that's copper. And also there will be four wires in it because a telephone in the UK will need three wires to work properly. Yes, it will work on two, but it won't always ring. That's why you need a third wire. Again, this is a mass produced lead. Let's uh, open it up and see what we've got inside. Again, I haven't opened this one up. I'm assuming, because of the price of it, that it's not going to be very good cable, but I don't actually know. So, let's just strip some of this back. Uh, 
Okay, right, so here we've just got two wires. So even though this is a UK plug on it, it's only got two wires. It needs a third wire to ring. So this will not ring on all phones in the UK. Anyway, let's strip back. Oh. Right, let's strip this back. I mean, that does look like pure copper. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Set the place on fire. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm not too sure what what that is, but I mean, that's going. I would say that that's some sort of copper clad aluminium or copper clad steel. I wouldn't say that that's pure copper from the way it's set on fire like that. Right, so now we're going to do this uh, ADSL one here. Now this is not a cheap cable. This is advertised as this is advertised as a high performance DSL cable. Okay, so if you have a look, look at it. You can see it says high performance DSL cable. Yeah. So basically, this is being sold as you know a top quality cable. Maybe it is, I haven't got a clue, but on a high performance ADSL cable, you'd want it to be twisted pair. Now, just before we cut this one open, these are the cables that I sell. I sell ADSL cables, I sell Cat5e and Cat6, so as you can see that this one here is the Cat5e one. Cat5e, and it's XL branded, so somebody's actually put their name to it. So it's an actual company called XL that's put their name through it. I sell it in Cat5e and also Cat6. That's the Cat6 one. And I'll make the ADSL and my VDSL cables out of this. And as you can see, it's proper twisted pair. Okay, can you see this is a Cat6 one. It's got the, uh, the cross member running right the way through it. Okay, nicely twisted. Cat6 cable is 23AWG and the Cat5e, cut it off here, but the Cat5e is 24AWG, okay? So, uh, and if we were to do the burn test on this one here, let's just undo that one. So this is what a proper cable should be like. So you can see, solid, pure copper. Okay, so I use it using solid core. And if we do the burn test on that, yeah, you can see, it's not going anywhere, that's pure copper. So that's the cables that I make my cable, uh, my ADSL and my VDSL cables out of. And this one here, this is a Cat6 one. As you can see, it's the same thing. Okay, so this cable here, it's nearly as expensive as my ones, so you think it's going to be the same quality, and it might be. I don't know what's inside this one. It's uh, advertised as a high-performance ADSL cable, so let's see. As you can see, it looks really nice. In fact, it probably looks a bit nicer than my cables because you've got this nice little moulded rubber boot on it, and it does look nice. But let's see, uh, let's see what's inside. So, chop it there. So it's got braiding around it, which is good, that's shielded. In reality though, you don't actually need it to be shielded unless you're in a really noisy environment like a factory. But, as you can see, even though it is shielded, the wires are only very slightly twisted around each other. So if you were to have a look on, where's my cable gone now? Uh, here we go. Right. If you were to have a look, see the browns. Can you see the difference in the twists? Yeah, there's quite a big difference there. So it looks like, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, it's ever so. It is. It is twisted round each other. Probably about the same amount as telephone cable. And uh, if we strip back, let's see if it's copper or not. Down this bit of paper in case I burn the table again. Hmm. Oh, 
Hard to tell on that one. Hard to tell. Let's just compare that to the patch lead again. Both use fresh bits and see what's what. Yeah, I'd say that is pure copper. Yeah, I think that is pure copper. So it's not a bad, it's not a bad lead. It isn't a bad lead, but I know I'm going to say this anyway. But although it is well made, so it's got the nice braiding around it, and the uh, it, you know it is copper. The uh, the wires are not twisted round as much as they would be on a, a proper Cat 5e or a proper Cat 6 cable. Also, personally, I prefer the solid core. I always like the solid core. I think it's a stronger cable, and I think it's. Uh, if you think about the resistance and stuff, although it is still rate that Cat 5e, whether it's stranded or solid, I just prefer using the solid core cable. So uh, yeah, so that's the difference. So basically, it is you do get what you pay for, and always be wary because just because it says it's Cat 5e, it doesn't necessarily mean it is Cat 5e. There's no way that that is Cat 5e. So I hope you found this video useful. If you do want to buy some of my Cat 5e or my Cat 6 ADSL leads, which are made out of proper XL cable in a nice white. Uh, low smoke, they're nice, nice cables, then uh, please go to my eBay shop. If you go to www.mrtelephone.co.uk, that will link through to my eBay shop and you will find this video on there and then you can click next to the video and it will have the uh, different leads for sale. Okay, thanks very much for your time. Take care. Bye now.